I'm Alfred Johnson, DO. Uh, my background is internal medicine, and I specialize in chronic disease, allergy, and toxic exposures. It is a pleasure to speak with you today, and today I would like to talk about damp indoor environments. Uh, many of you may be familiar with uh, water intrusion, uh, dampness in a building. Uh, hopefully, I can help you better understand what is happening uh, when this happens. Uh, generally, uh, in placement is dry. Uh, you have no dampness. The roof doesn't leak. The hot water heater works fine. The furnaces drain appropriately. But in some cases, water intrusion will occur, either from roof leaks, uh, air conditioner overflowing, water heater breaking, water pipe busting, uh, or just uh, water drips. The real problem arises when moisture is maintained. A small one-time leak uh, that's fixed uh, usually dries out uh, with no residual mold. But if you have a continuous drip or it is not dried immediately, then mold can grow. Well, what happens with mold? Mold is both indoors, outdoors, all around. We're exposed to it on an everyday basis. Uh, there's about 40% of the population is allergic to different items. If those people are overexposed uh, to certain items, it can be pollens, it can be cats, and it can be molds, they become allergic. And when you're enclosed in a damp house, you have overexposure to molds, and in some cases, bacteria too, but generally it's mainly molds. These molds uh, are generally the black molds that produce toxins, and toxins are chemicals. Uh, we're all familiar with pesticides that are toxic chemicals, solvents that are toxic chemicals, gasoline is a toxic chemical. These fumes are not healthy to breathe. The molds that produce these toxic uh, fumes are the black molds that produce such toxins as triclothecine, aflatoxin, ochratoxin. These are neurotoxins. They affect the brain. They affect the other tissues, each cell, the little engines in your cell, which are mitochondria, and hinder function. Uh, so you want to avoid uh, exposure to these toxins. Uh, also, uh, indoor dampness uh, will continue to occur if there's a continuous leak. You have uh, live in a, an area where there's chronic moisture, like in a basement. Uh, these are all areas to look for. Well, what do you look for if you have a water leak uh, or if you have uh, mold even discover you have mold. First, look at your air conditioner grates or the heating grates. Do they have black stuff growing on them? Are they dirty? Uh, the other place to look is the air intake. Is that dirty? Uh, is there a musty smell? Uh, has there been water leaks around the shower? And is there black growing uh, along the baseboards? Uh, when you pull your carpet back, uh, has there been dampness uh, in the carpet with mold growing under the carpet, in the carpet pad? Uh, you may have a pier and beam house. Uh, there may be moisture under the house that then is sucked up through uh, just holes uh, in the floor or, or the house breathing, or maybe air ducts under the house that mold is sucked through and that dampness is sucked through and mold spores uh, are throughout the house. So the main things you want to look for are areas of water spots, uh, areas where there's dampness. The sheet rock may be uh, soft where there's dampness. Uh, you may have discoloration behind the wallpaper or in, or in the wood or buckling of the wood. If so, these are all signs of increased dampness and potential uh, mold growth. Uh, people that live in these environments uh, can f begin to feel ill. Uh, they may first start to feel fatigued, uh, may have a little muscle ache, not quite as bright and cheery in the morning. Uh, 
that can progress to where people become non-functional. Uh, I had a pharmacist's wife who came in complaining that she couldn't walk. Uh, she was crawling around on her hands and knees doing her housework. Uh, couldn't stand up because she was too dizzy and too weak. Uh, I asked her what was different about her house and she said, well, come to think of it, the dining room wall is kind of black and green. And they had a, a leak from the roof and also from the air conditioner that ran down behind the wall. You couldn't see the water, but it was moisture within the wall. And a lot of times these molds grow inside the wall where you cannot see them. What's our next step then in really figuring out what's going on? Uh, individuals present in my office with just basic chronic symptoms. So a, a, a good history is important, a sequence of events. When did the symptoms first start? Uh, where do you feel the worst? At home, at work? Uh, do you feel better when you're on vacation? Uh, what kind of symptoms are you getting? Are they kind of chronic low-level symptoms that resolve sometimes, or are they severe symptoms that are staying on a permanent basis? Uh, these all help in deciding how to look at the individual and what is going on. If it's not clear and your lab tests are all negative by standard lab test, then you want to think of something involving the environment, of what's causing it. Is it mold in your house? If it's been damp, it makes sense to look at it. The next step would be then to have an indoor air quality uh, certified person come and evaluate your home. Uh, it is important that they have experience with homes and not industry because big buildings are different than houses. Uh, they have to be aware to look inside the walls, uh, behind the sinks, under the counters, uh, in the closets. This is where uh, poor circulation occurs, where dampness can persist, where pipes are that can leak. Uh, they have to look in the attic to see whether there's been dampness uh, from the air conditioners or a hot water heater that has leaked uh, on a continuous basis. This will create mold. The next step is in, in evaluating the individual, the, the individual person. And this is where the doctor comes in. Uh, we talked about the history, like getting a history of sequence of events, where you feel better, where you feel worse, uh, whether you felt better on vacation uh, to the beach where you get clean, fresh air. Uh, you have to watch it because uh, beach uh, dwellings may be damp uh, and have mold in them also. But if they feel better someplace else, uh, then uh, most likely it has to do something with their home and you look at the individual. Uh, we as a physician can do blood tests to look at mold sensitivity to see just whether you've been exposed to mold uh, and how much your body has responded to it. You can do skin tests to find out about mold sensitivity. The best skin test to do is an interdermal skin test. It is much more sensitive than the common prick test on the back. And then we can measure urines to look at mycotoxins, the actual toxins in your system. And those can stay for months to years. They attach themselves to the fat and your nervous system is covered in fat and so it affects the nerves also. The most common symptoms involve uh, fatigue, malaise, difficulty thinking, uh, can be dizziness, a foggy head, and also the gastrointestinal tract where you get uh, abdominal bloating, uh, indigestion, um, belching, uh, and abdominal pain. Uh, the largest nerve in the body is the vagus nerve, which runs from your brain to your intestinal tract, and it's affected with the toxins. It affects gastrointestinal uh, function, as well as having direct toxic effect on the cells. So with Looking at the patient, there's three areas that we mainly look at when we're looking strictly at the potential mold effect. One is, is the allergy part of it, which involves blood tests and allergy testing uh, with the interdermal testing. Number two is the toxic part, where you measure the urine for the mycotoxins to see 
what level of toxins are in your system. A person should not have any toxins. The third thing is looking for infection. With mold, you can get the spores in your nose, in your lungs, and you can have actual infection where you have chronic sinusitis, chronic bronchitis, and even a chronic cough with low-level pneumonia or full-blown pneumonia where it affects the lungs uh, and you have mold in your lungs. These areas need to be uh, evaluated uh, and that is done either by blood tests, by cultures, by CT scans, evaluating the sinuses, the lungs uh, to see for infection. Uh, even sometimes bronchoscopy is necessary to wash the lungs out, to look for the spores that are actually uh, present in the lungs causing the inflammation irritation. So once you've discovered that you have dampness in the house, you've gone to the physician and someone that really knows uh, about mold that can do the test we described, uh, then you have to figure out what the, the treatment process is. And the treatment depends upon all the tests that we described. If you're just allergic to it, then removing yourself from the exposure many times will clear up your symptoms. If you become so allergic that then you start reacting to outdoor mold, the mold that is uh, ubiquitous in our environment, then you have to go on allergy shots as well as the avoidance. You'll have to have a clean environment to live in and filter the air so when you're in your home, you have less of an exposure and you have a safer living environment. If you have the toxins, then there are different mechanisms to get the toxins out of your system. Avoidance and healthy living, as we talked about, is the first step. The second step is using antioxidants to help break down those toxins in your system. So that includes items like vitamin C, glutathione, CoQ10, the B vitamins, uh, all can help with that uh, to help your liver break down the toxins uh, that are stored in your system. The third part of that is mobilizing the toxins. Uh, this can be done by exercise, uh, sauna in some cases, and the most effective way in mobilizing toxins from the body tissues to where uh, they have attached themselves, because these are very lipophilic, fat-seeking compounds that are tightly bound, is to use hyperbaric oxygen treatment. And this is using a hyperbaric chamber, uh, such as they use in uh, the bends from scuba diving or in treating wounds in the hospital, where a person breathes 100% oxygen under pressure. This increases the oxygen to the tissues five to seven times, increasing the metabolic rate of the cells, speeding up the little mitochondria giving them the nutrient, oxygen, that helps heal. It throws out the toxins. Your body circulation picks that up. Your liver processes it, the oxygen, and the antioxidants help your liver process it. And then you bind up those toxins with a binder that you drink that goes through the intestinal tract that binds the bile. So it can be psyllium, it can be uh, cholestyramine, um, any number of different things that are binders, methyl cellulose also can bind. Uh, with this process then, uh, you're treating the allergy with the allergy shots, uh, you're treating infection with uh, medication if you need it from the antifungal standpoint, and you're taking care of healing the body from the toxins which is healing the brain and the other tissues, the nerves, by using the hyperbaric uh, oxygen to help heal. Hopefully this process, as I've outlined today, will help you better understand what can happen when an individual is exposed to toxins, molds, uh, substances in the damp indoor environment. The message is be aware of your environment, whether it's at home or at work, 
or whether you're going on vacation and staying in a hotel or a condo, you want a healthy environment. So look at what's around you. Look at the walls. Look at the air conditioner outlets. Look at the bathrooms. Uh, use your nose. If it smells musty, moldy, damp, then find a healthier place to stay. Do not put yourself in harm's way with an unhealthy environment. Being aggressive in seeking medical help is important. The longer you're exposed to a unhealthy, damp indoor environment where you're exposed to the mold spores, the mold toxins, and have the potential infection, the harder it is to heal and the longer it takes to improve your health. If you have questions, uh, please uh, contact uh, my office, 972-479-0400, uh, or email info at johnsonmedicalassociates.com, or you can go to our website, Johnson Medical Associates and Hyperbaric Centers of Texas. An excellent reference uh, is a book published by the government, uh, the Institute of Medicine, called Damp Indoor Environments. It talks about all the issues of molds, uh, of damp indoor environments, of the toxins that are produced. Today we just talked about a few of those uh, that are the most important ones that we see on a daily basis. Uh, those molds that we see commonly in the indoor environment that are causing problems that produce toxins involve penicillium, aspergillus, stachyboitrus, chitonium, and the cladosporium group.